2022 proved to be much worse than most people expected. Markets haven't been this bad since the 2008 crash. The crash that not only crushed the entire US economy, where huge corporations such as Lehman Brothers went bankrupt, but it took down the rest of the world with it. It was like the domino effect that led to the Euro debt crisis. China was hit fairly hard with a huge drop in exports. However, in a few years, the economy recovered and the United States experienced the longest economic expansion in its history, over a decade of economic expansion. However, as a wise man once said, whatever rises will eventually fall. So did the growth in 2020. But government spending kept the economic wheel spinning. The only problem with the current crisis is that the bubble has been growing so much that we are now at that point where we no longer can postpone another crisis. In the middle of such a panic, most retail investors are panicking and selling off their assets before everything crashes farther. A trade war with China, a global pandemic, an actual war in Europe, oil prices above 100, and worldwide inflation. It seems like if you're not going to sell now, soon your investments will be worth pennies. But that's not what one of the greatest investors in the world thinks. Warren Buffett is urging investors not to panic and look for great deals in the market. At the height of the 2008 financial crisis, when banks were falling down one after another, Buffett pumped $5 billion into Goldman Sachs shortly after Lehman Brothers collapsed. It literally saved the bank since investors lost confidence in the system. And here, the most respected investor is throwing billions of dollars into Goldman Sachs. In exchange, he received $5 billion in preferred stocks, paying a 10% annual dividend. That's $500 million of cash every single year, as well as warrants enabling it to buy 43.5 million of Goldman Common shares at $115 each at any point in the ensuing five years. While many called him fool back then, nothing is better than cash in the bank. But that didn't last long. In 2011, Goldman Sachs bought back their preferred stocks for $5.6 billion and handed Buffett a $500 million bonus. So that raises a few questions since we are in the middle of another crisis. A crisis that could end up much worse than the 2008 crash where some companies already began going bankrupt before the recession officially started. What are the assets that will keep generating income not only during the crisis, but even after? If you're ready, give this video a thumbs up and let's dive in. I love checking my phone the moment I wake up to find out what's happening in the world, but often I end up browsing social media and end up wasting my precious time in the morning. I wasn't satisfied with how I spend my mornings until I came across Morning Bro. It's a free daily newsletter that delivers you business, finance, and tech news that you can read in just 5 minutes. Traditional news is dry, dense, and boring, while Morning Brew is witty, relevant, and informative. When social media loudly shouted that Elon Musk was terminating his deal with Twitter, Morning Brew briefly explained the reasons behind that and that Twitter was taking Musk to court. Or how about the economy? Are we about to enter a recession? The June jobs report showed that, no, we are not there yet. US employers added 372,000 jobs, topping expectations of 250,000. And self-employed has hit its highest level since the 2008 financial crisis. There is no reason not to subscribe to Morning Brew. Sign up for free using the link morningbrewdaily.com slash proactive thinker or click the link in the description. It's completely free and takes less than 15 seconds to subscribe. When you think of Bill Gates, you think of a tech billionaire who is focused on developing technologies that would revolutionize the world. He became a billionaire in his 30s after finding Microsoft, one of the largest tech companies in the world. You would never connect Bill Gates to farming. However, last year, he aggressively began buying farmland. 
he has amassed nearly 270,000 acres of farmland across the country, which means he owns more land than the entire city of New York. Farmland doesn't sound as cool as tech startup, but at the end of the day, you can't eat your iPhone and MacBooks to satisfy your basic needs. Jeff Bezos is another example. After successfully building the largest e-commerce platform, he has purchased 420,000 acres of land, mostly in Texas. As Mark Twain once said, buy land, they are not making it anymore. It's a limited resource. Your stocks and crypto can go down by 50% overnight because of an economic crisis. But you will never wake up one morning finding out that your farmland is worthless. Americans make up just 5% of the world's population but consume most of the world's resources, especially food. But now the world is on the brink of hunger. According to IMF, the world economy is at risk of food crisis as a result of unprecedented supply chain disruptions caused by the war in Ukraine. Ukraine and Russia are some of the biggest exporters of grain, which are halted as a result of the conflict, which has caused a worldwide shortage of food. So oil prices aren't the only source of global inflation. What is certain about the future of humanity is that wars have always been part of human history and the demand for food will never go away as long as there are humans, which is why billionaires across the globe, especially in the US, are acquiring farmland. Number 2. Royalties If you have watched Shark Tank, you're familiar with royalty deals that often thrown away by Kevin O'Leary. Instead of asking for a bigger pie of the economy, Kevin O'Leary is known to go after royalties. The question is, why? When you invest in a company, you become one of the shareholders. It is in your best interest for the company to grow so that one day you're either going to sell your piece of the pie and finally enjoy the fruits of your labor or the company will finally get profitable and share the profits with you. However, that might never happen. Uber is a $43 billion company that is still bleeding cash. Facebook, the largest social media company in the world, has never paid a dime in dividends. But unlike equity, with a royalty deal, investors will always be on the winning side. A royalty of 10% sales on all products would mean that if a firm sells $1,000 worth of goods, they have to pay $100 to the party they have a royalty deal with. Even if the business is bleeding cash, the investor will still be making a profit as long as there is revenue. Whenever a computer manufacturer sells a PC with Windows operating system pre-uploaded on it, they pay a royalty fee to Microsoft. There are different kinds of royalties, from intellectual properties such as patents to franchise rights that are often used by chain stores to leverage their products and services. Royalties guarantee cash on the table regardless of the income of the business. Number 3. Bones Holding bonds in the last three years was dumb. Low interest rates made bonds so unattractive that literally almost any other investment easily outperformed bonds. Since the beginning of the pandemic, 10-year bond rates were less than 1%. I mean, that is lower than inflation. You're guaranteed to lose money. However, as the age of cheap money comes to an end, bond rates began to shoot they're now as high as they have been in 2018, floating around 3 to 3.5%. That is definitely lower than inflation. However, that is still far better than 0.5%. And if the Fed keeps raising rates to finally end the highest inflation in four decades, bond rates will only rise. I wouldn't be surprised if bond rates would double by the end of the year. When everything is crashing, government bonds don't just put cash on the table regardless of the circumstances, but also keep growing. But don't let the storm push you away from the markets. Whenever everything is booming, it is easy to make money because everything is growing anyways. The real challenge comes when the storm hits the market, as is the case now. Stocks might not seem attractive, but this is not the first storm. During the dot-com bubble, stocks like Amazon lost like 90% of their value. During the 2008 financial crisis, markets across the globe were crushing. 
and what's happening now is yet another crisis. The storm will definitely clean the market from inefficient companies, but those who provide real value will prevail. And a storm is an opportunity to purchase these stocks at a great discount. And finally, private businesses. Private businesses make up almost half of the US economy. A great number of them struggled tremendously during the pandemic, especially restaurants, individual stores, and small businesses. Those who survived are yet to overcome another challenge, a challenge of high inflation, high interest rates, and lower demand. It is not a surprise we'll witness a lot of bankruptcies in the coming future. Not because these companies are bad, but rather because they simply don't have the airbag to withstand the crisis. So big businesses will most likely jump in to acquire them, since they will easily become a money-making machine once the storm passes. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.